if you're here because you are crazy obsessing over something you just want to forget about, then you're in the right place. Hello, hello, welcome to my video. Hello, hello. There's a wonderful story by Edgar Allan Poe called Imp of the Perverse. It's where this man kills another man and inherits everything he owns. He becomes rich and he is totally living the good life. And whenever he starts thinking too much about the murder, all he has to think to himself is, I am safe. However, one day he changes his mantra to, I am safe. Yes, if I not be fool enough to make an open confession. I don't need to tell you that's the beginning of the end. But just in case I do, that's the beginning of the end. The next thing you know, he's gone crazy. He's blacked out somewhere. And when he's woken up, he's made a full confession. Sometimes it seems like your mind's against you. Like when you're up on a high building and something in your brain says, jump. That's because it's hard not to think about the things that you're not supposed to think about. To give a classic example, try not to think about a white bear. I'm serious. Do not think about a white bear. Hard, right? Dan Wegner, a social psychologist, found out why. When you try to control your thoughts, you automatically set up an explicit goal. And whenever you set up a specific goal, your mind automatically monitors your progress. Usually, this system works very well, except when you're trying not to think about something. Because, funny enough, asking yourself whether or not you're thinking about a white bear tends to make you think about a white bear. And then you have to try even harder to control your thoughts. This loop keeps on happening until you're mentally exhausted. So in a way, trying not to think about something almost guarantees that you will in fact think about it. For example, if you're hanging out with some new people and you think, just don't make a fool of yourself, then your subconscious mind looks for any signs of foolishness. And what comes to your conscious mind are all the ways you can make a fool of yourself. This is why the best way to not think about something is to think about something else. If you can't think about a white bear, then order yourself to think about a pink bear. If you want to put something in your past behind you, like a bad breakup, don't order yourself not to think about your ex-boyfriend. Instead, think about what your new boyfriend will be like, or that new opportunity at your job, or that place you've always wanted to visit. Additionally, if you've maybe crossed the line into obsession, don't try to stop your obsessive tendency. Switch to something that's more healthy to obsess over. This kind of ties back into the golden rule of habit change. If you've watched my How to Break a Bad Habit video, then you already know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, then you should totally check it out. That way you can see exactly why this tip works. It's easier to replace a habit than it is to completely get rid of one. Which is why, if you're in an obsessive state, it's easier to switch your obsession than it is to try to completely eradicate it. An example might be focusing on the plants in your garden rather than whatever you're trying not to think about. There's an endless number of things that you could invest in. Invest that attention. Here's another tactic. You can also just distract yourself. A perfect example of this is the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment. I feel like so many people have heard about this, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to go over it. Some scientists at Stanford decided to test preschool willpower. So they took a bunch of preschoolers and they put them in different rooms and were like, look, do you like marshmallows? Of course you do. You know the only thing better than one marshmallow? Two marshmallows. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna take this singular marshmallow and I'm gonna put it right in front of your face. And then I'm gonna leave the room. If when I come back, that marshmallow is still there, uneaten, then I'm gonna give you a second marshmallow free. What a great deal, right? The scientists checked back in on these children 15 years later and found out that the number of seconds they waited correspond with their likelihood of getting into a top university, as well as a bunch of other amazing things. The main experimenter at Stanford was like, OMG, this is insane, how even? So he looked into it and found out that the successful children who had managed to hold out until the second marshmallow were essentially just distracting themselves. They looked away from the marshmallow and thought about other things, so they didn't have to use all of their willpower and fight their brain's natural processes. Distraction works. In conclusion, if it's been days and you can't stop thinking about something, try obsessing over something else. That seems to be science's biggest recommendation for you. And if you just need a temporary fix, try distraction. It 100% will not work forever, but it will work temporarily. If that doesn't work for you, here are two more things you can try that I know are scientifically proven, but are mostly my personal advice to you. Sometimes the best way to get over something is to go through it. If you've been obsessing over something for a long time now, maybe you just need to lean into it. It sounds counterproductive, but take some time to write down every little thing that's bothering you. Your inability to think about anything else could be your brain telling you that you need to process some stuff. And it's very possible that your brain won't let up until you do. Finally, try meditation. 
This is kind of hit or miss because there are so many different types of meditation and it can be hard to find the right one for you at first. So if you aren't patient, this might not be the best method for you, but it can work. Meditation lets you process things that you didn't even know you need to process and generally in a peaceful type of way. If all else fails, YouTube search an anxiety meditation and just try it. Okay, that's four different things you can do to try to stop thinking about whatever it is that's derailing you. Quick note, a lot of this content came from The Happiness Hypothesis by Jonathan Haidt. It's a fantastic book and chances are, if you're watching this video, you could use an extra dose of happiness in your life. And for that reason, I highly recommend you read it, especially if you like psychology. However, I understand that reading isn't everyone's favorite hobby. So if you want all of the amazing things from this book, but you don't actually want to read the book, then you can check out my video where I break down the happiness hypothesis step by step. It's a great one and I recommend everybody watch it because happiness is super important. The link for that is in the description. Additionally, the video should be somewhere on the screen. And as always, if you like this content, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.